Welcome everyone to the IROS 2020 conference. I am Stefano Dalla Gasperina, and today I will present a work that was born from a collaboration between NearLab, Politecnico di Milano, and Renew Robotics Lab, University of Texas. In particular, we will present a new inverse kinematics method that solves for additional joint coordination constraints. Then we validated this method with an upper limb exoskeleton for post-stroke rehabilitation. First of all, let's think about how we are made. We can perform a lot of complex movements in joint space and task space, which means that in one, on one side, we can control how much or how fast we want to bend our elbow or our wrist. And on the other side, we can also perform arm reaching tasks just by controlling the position of our hand. Robots and in particular robotic arms have been invented to perform similar functional tasks with higher accuracy and repeatability, but they don't have this ability to switch between joint space and task space. That's why we need to solve inverse kinematics problems to bridge the gap between joint control and end effect of motion. So what's missing? In the case of wearable exoskeleton, it is not important to precisely control the position of the end effect. It is more important to provide a good coordination among the joints of the human arm. This is why we present an inverse kinematics algorithm that exploits the redundancy of the robot to solve for conflicting multi-constraints. Some of these constraints can derive from the need of a coordination among joints, and some other can also derive from, from closed chain mechanisms that cannot be solved with traditional serial robots methods. To validate the method, we use the Harmony exoskeleton. Harmony is a bimanual upper body exoskeleton for post-stroke rehabilitation. And as shown in figure on the right, it has seven degrees of freedom at each arm, five at the shoulder, one at the elbow, and one at the wrist. In this way, since the number of the degrees of freedom of the robot is higher than the three-dimensional position of the end effector, Harmony is a kinematically redundant problem. The Harmony exoskeleton also presents two different constraints that we need to add to the inverse kinematic problem. The first one regards the so-called scapulohumeral rhythm. That means that when we raise our arm, the center of rotation also is elevated. And in Harmony, theta one actuates this movement and its motion depends on the configuration of the other joints. That's why we talk about joint coordination. On the other side, Harmony also presents a closed chain mechanism. In the figure on the right, we can see that theta, theta two degree of freedom is implemented with a parallelogram. This structure can be simplified into a serial chain just by excluding the theta two second and the theta two third and by adding an additional constraint, which is theta two prime equal to minus theta two. So after presenting the constraints, let's talk about the inverse kinematics problem. The kinematic problem of a robot can be addressed as a differential kinematics in the form x dot equal to j times theta dot, where x is the task space, theta is the joint angle, and j is the well-known Jacobian matrix. To compute the inverse kinematics, the equation has to be inverted. And most of the time, this is done by means of the pseudo inverse of the Jacobian matrix, which is J plus in our case. As we said, harmony is redundant. So a null space exists, which means that there is a bunch of different robot configurations that all solve the same inverse kinematics problem. In this way, we can add an homogeneous solution to the particular solution and this homogeneous solution explores the null space to achieve additional constraints. The homogeneous solution is defined as the multiplication between the null space projector, Pn, and a perturbation to the particular solution, which is Q dot. So going deeper in this formulation, the term in blue solves for the task space constraint and is named particular solution, and the term on the right is used to add 
additional joint space constraints, and it is the homogeneous solution. In particular, the perturbation term, which is delta Q, is obtained by a projected gradient algorithm that uses the partial derivative of an objective function, which is h theta, that has to be maximized. This equation can be seen overall as a weighted sum, where j plus and the null space projector are the weights. And by definition, the null space projector is close to zero. And this is why the joint space constraints has a lower priority and lower impact with respect to the task space. Now the problem is also to find an objective function that solves for the equality constraints in the joint space. And since we couldn't find any functions that met our requirements, we here present the H coupling objective function that simply tries to couple the actual joint ang angle with a desired value. The desired value, for example, can come from joint coordination constraints. In this way, the perturbation becomes minus K times actual angle minus desired angle. In other, word, in other words, it tries to push the actual configuration of the robot towards another configuration, which is still within the null space of the robot. And this new configuration also solves for additional constraints. So given this solution, we now propose two algorithms to be compared with the traditional method that we use for serial robots. In particular, on the left, the standard method first computes the Jacobian matrix. It solves the inverse kinematics problem. It updates the configuration. Then through the direct kinematics, it goes back to the task space to check if the task error is below a certain tolerance, then if it is, the algorithm exits the convergence loop. With the projected gradient method, which is PGIK, we added the homogeneous solution with the previously described objective function and with the constraint projected gradient, which is CPGIK, we also added an additional exit condition for the convergence loop and this exit condition checks if the joint space error is below a certain tolerance. After presenting these algorithms, we tested them with circular trajectories, squared trajectories, and these trajectories were performed on different planes at constant speed and at variable speeds. Then we computed some performance metrics to validate them. And as a qualitative result, we also tested the methods with complex planar and 3D trajectories that were fed to a VREP simulator and to the Harmony exoskeleton. So this, for example, is a circular frontal trajectory that we computed with the new proposed method. So going straight to the results, on the left, we can see the joint error for the first constraint, and on the right, the plot for the second one. First of all, please notice that both the blue and the red axis represent the joint space errors, but they do have different scales. Then we can see that both the presented method that are in blue were able to reduce the joint space constraint error with respect to the red curves that, are, that represent the standard method. In particular, the CPGIK, which is the solid blue, performs slightly better, and the error is always bounded below a threshold value. This threshold value is due to the con exit condition to the convergence loop. To summarize the results that we obtained with all the trajectories, we aggregated the data and we computed these averaged performance metrics. One of these is the number of iterations needed to exit the convergence loop. We can see that the CPGIK, which is the constrained algorithm, had the worst performance. So more computational effort was needed to exit the convergence loop. According to the task space errors, the results are comparable and always below the tolerance. 
on the other side, according to the two joint space errors, the traditional method, that is the red one, was not able to guarantee the constraints. And the other presented methods that are in blue and green had better results. Finally, the movement's movement, the movement smoothness was computed as the time integral of the jerk of the trajectory, and the CPGIK obtained slightly worse performances with respect to the other methods. So overall, we can say that the JIK had the worst performances in terms of joint space error. The CPGIK had the best performances, and the PGIK, which is the green one, can be considered as a trade-off between the two other approaches. Now, as I mentioned before, we also tried to perform some complex trajectories, both in 2D and in 3D, with a VREP simulator that you can see on the left and with the Harmony robot on the right. We can actually see that both the robot and the simulator were able to follow the complex trajectory that we computed with the, with the method. On the right, you can see that there are some errors and vibration. These are only due to the stiffness parameter of the impedance controller of the Harmony robot that is kept very low to avoid to harm the user. So getting to our conclusions, we proposed a novel method that was able to solve the inverse kinematics and to add additional joint equality constraints by exploiting the redundancy of the robot. The CPGIK had the best performances in terms of joint space error, and the PGIK can be considered as a good trade-off among smoothness, computational effort, and joint coordination. We are aware that we use the Harmony Exoskeleton as a platform to demonstrate the method, but we believe this approach can be transferred to new application fields of robotics, especially when the robots are expected to interact with, with the humans. So thank you for your attention, and if you have any question, please contact me.